<laughs> when I grew up, wrestlers were like seven foot. You know, I, I grew up on Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. You know, and um, as much as I would, you know, fantasize about being a wrestler, it was something that I never even thought about realistically. I was just a fat kid in high school, a sci-fi nerd. Uh, I love watching wrestling. I love movies. I put in my high school uh, yearbook, they put uh, future plans. Become a professional wrestler, I put in there. And I meant it as a joke. You know, I meant it as a joke. Like, like I, I, everyone knows I love wrestling. I've been a stand-up comedian, and um, a friend of mine said, there's a there's a promote a local promotion, and uh, you want to go check it out? And uh, I'm like, really? There's a local promotion here in, in Western New York? I knew nothing about it. And uh, I went to them, and, and I'm like, I'm listening. I'm, I'm good on the mic. Maybe I could be an announcer. You know, maybe I could I hand out flyers for you guys if you guys just hang around. <laughs> Gee willikers, you know, uh, which would have been great back then. And then the promoter looked at me, and I was in, I was in pretty good shape. And then uh, he goes, well, why don't you start? you ever think about training you know I'm like what so I'm like well, sure uh, you know and so I, I trained I started training with uh, Richie Deerwald him and his dad had made it a name for themselves on the uh, the indie circuit next thing you know he goes I, I want I want to have a match with you ladies and gentlemen from Rome New York weighing in at 219 pounds Joe I just remember being so nervous and afterwards being so blown up, blown out of breath. I didn't even do anything. It was absolutely amazing. It was, it was, it, I could have died that day and, and I had fulfilled everything. When you're wrestling, you become a living, breathing comic book character. You know, you're, you're, it, and it, you become it. You don't, you don't just pretend it, you know, and, and, it, for that, for that time you're out there, it's it's absolutely amazing to just be that character, to be so involved in it, you know. Uh, like I've had opponents look at me, and it's like it's you can't even tell it's me. It's it's Johnny Puma, you know. And it's as an as an entertainer, there's nothing more rewarding than that to get so wrapped up in, into the character. The name was like it it just rolled out of my tongue accidentally. Like like I I, I was just like I wanted something arrogant, and I wasn't even thinking of the animal Puma. I was just thinking of something. Something just just obnoxious, like Puma, you know. Like I was thinking of, a, of an Italian, like Johnny Puma, you know, like that. And 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 the guy I said that to goes, "Oh, that's really good, you know." Plus, you can play on the words, you know, the cat thing and this that kind of thing, you know. And fans can call you pussy because you're a bad guy. It's like, not bad. Character is just pretty much every Italian character I've grew up watching, you know. De Niro, uh, 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 Vinny Barbarino. Because he's kind of goofy, you know, he thinks he's hip, but he's not, you know, which makes him, there's a lovable side to Johnny Puma, you know, uh, and he came out, you know, he'd take off, he'd be all oiled up, and, and, uh, and his catchphrase would be, um, don't hate me for being beautiful, hate yourselves for being ugly, it ain't my fault. Being in shape is important with wrestling. My character is supposed to be in, in, in phenomenal shape, so that's a lot to live up to. Like, I have to live up to this this fictional character all the time. If you're not in good shape, the showmanship's gone. People are expecting larger-than-life characters, so you have to live up to that. The day of the show, I'll eat a little something I normally wouldn't eat for, like, I mean, this, this peanut butter jelly's not bad for me, but it's not something I eat every day. It's normally like just beans and chicken. And the day after a show, I just, I eat everything in the house, just for one day. Everything and anything. I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of friends in my life, uh, good friends, and they're, they're, they're still good friends, but I've always been an outsider, and I never felt I fit in until I met these other wrestlers. And it's like, it's like I said, that I, 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 I tried a lot of things in entertainment, and I did them well, and I enjoyed them, but nothing ever fit until I got into wrestling. And nothing, the the uh, camaraderie between us wrestlers is it's it's absolutely amazing. I posted. I did this. Dude, everything. I I I I go. Thank you so much. That was good, man. The outside stuff was gold, man.
And the Superfly, you know, oh, the color, I good color. color. I good color? Yeah, very good. Okay, good, good. Good, good. yeah, I did like ten. finally got in the ring. Oh, oh, we're gonna, I think we're going to pick a photo of it. Yeah. Yeah. When I hear people say wrestling is fake, I say they're idiots. Not in the sense like, like, because it's real. You know, I say they're idiots because saying wrestling f fake is is like standing up during during the middle of a movie and going, wait a minute, wait a minute, this, 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 these are actors. You know, that's not Darth Vader. That's that's a, a guy in a suit, David Prowse. You know, it's not even his real voice, James Earl Jones. You know, so it's irrelevant. You know.